another session of Meet the Mods. We got Maria C82 on here. Uh, she's been with Black Box since November 2016. I love trading with Maria. And we're going to let Maria introduce herself and go over some of the things she looks for pre market. Uh, including upgrades, downgrades, and a lot of the things she does and how to use those features again. And then we're going to do some trading with you guys and gals. So Maria, go ahead and get started. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning, guys. How are you? I hope everyone's okay. If you could really quickly just um, in the questions box, if you can hear me and see my screen, can you please hit uh, or let me know that you can hear me and see me? Awesome. All right. So guys, I've been trading for a little over 14 years now. Actually, yeah, it's over 14 years. I um, was a broker. I started, um, well, Schwab gave me my licenses. And then from Schwab, I moved over to Scott Trade. And then from Scott Trade, I moved to TD Ameritrade Institutional. Um, I have always loved the market. I actually started trading before I was a broker. Uh, and as the years progressed, so did my trading. And um, just as a side note, this this was always a dream. I never, in a million years, thought that I would ever get the get the job at Schwab to be a broker. Um, and then once I got the job, it was game over. That was it. Felt right. It felt good. I loved what I was doing, um, and I still love what I'm doing. So that's a little bit of history for me. Um, I often get questions, especially from newer traders, about um, you know, how did I get to where I am today? And for me, a lot of it was trial and error. There's a lot of trial and error, a lot of um, reflection on the mistakes I was making, and um, a lot of studying. The studying never, ever, ever stops. It doesn't matter how long you've been trading, you will always, always have new stuff to learn. So um, as far as things that I would recommend, I would definitely say, um, make sure that you're studying keep studying don't ever give up uh, you know and uh, make sure that you're okay with you know with looking within yourself to figure out why you do some of the things that you do when you're trading those were the biggest hurdles that i had personally and um, i'm happy that i've gotten past them so let's get started in the morning pre markets so, uh, i use a couple of different sources and obviously black box being the main one um, the first thing that I typically do in the morning, though, is I will go to investing.com and I will read an article here that has, um, they call it uh, the top or, wow, it's been a long morning already, um, things that are moving the market. So basically, it's five things to watch for in the market. And I usually have it pushed to my phone, um, but investing.com is where I start. So investing.com right here. And as soon as I read that, I will go and find out what's going on for the day as far as economic calendar is concerned. And again, I use investing.com's um, calendar. If you come over here, you'll see that you have a little drop down thing. You click on economic calendar. And you can actually, I don't know what this thing is, you can actually filter it. So if you click on filters, you can clear all, unless you want to see you know, various uh, countries. I usually, if I'm just looking for U.S. economic data, I will clear all and then click on United States and hit apply wherever it went. There we go. And I'll make that a little bit bigger. And you can see that we had a couple of Fed speakers early this morning. We had housing starts um, and coming up. Well, we had, you know, the housing price index as well. Coming up, we have consumer confidence at 10 a.m. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye on any positions that I might be in around that time period because that could affect, you know, our trade, depending on how that number comes out. So this is all of the rest of the economic data for the day. Um, I think Dali speaks at three or two. It's just so that I have an idea as to things that could potentially move the market. So initially I start off, I read the article, um, you know, that tell us or that tells us five things to look at for the day. And I'm going to look for the link here in just a second too, so I can show you that. And from there, I usually go to, um, to CNBC. And I have this, again, it's pushed out to my phone every morning. It stocks making the biggest moves pre-market. And I can quickly, it gives me, you know, a list of stuff that has 
news that could move the market. So we see here McDonald's is buying um, a marketing technology firm uh, called Dynamic Yield for 300 million. Facebook has a little bit of news here. They've removed accounts from uh, Iran, Russia, Macedonia, Macedonia, and Kosovo. MasterCard um, is making an investment. Tesla, we have some news there. Bed Bath & Beyond definitely has some news, some activist news, NVIDIA. We have some analyst news there, and we're gonna go through all these again on the Black Box website. But this just gives me a quick list of tickers that have news that could that can potentially move the market and from there i go to black box so i've i have my my entire day view i have the things you know written down i usually keep in my notebook um i normally keep a list so that i can quickly see like okay these are the times that i need to be aware of these are the items that i need to be aware of so once i've done that I look to see which tickers seem to have the biggest news in the morning. And from there, I go to black box. And the first thing I do is I come down here to news. And in the news, what I'm looking for initially is going to be our upgrades and downgrades. So again, at the, this is gonna be your third button. So from the right at the bottom, right to right to the left of your chat button, I clicked on news. I have it set to all news. I clicked on ratings. And now all I'm gonna see here is gonna be ratings. Analyst upgrades, downgrades, coverage initiated, resumed, whatever the case might be. And some of these may, actually let's see, I might have to make the screen a little bit smaller. Some of them I actually have written down because um, it looks like they may have fallen off because it streams. So WWE, we know this morning, has a 110, or they got a price target increase from 95 to 110 at maximum. TMO, um, they got a 288 price target increase from 270. Autodesk, 188 from 175. And NVIDIA, Piper started with an overweight with a $200 price target. So those were the bigger price target increases and upgrades that I was looking at. Once I've looked at that, I come right over here to our top 10 gainers in the bottom left of your screen. I'm on the NASDAQ uh, New York Stock Exchange tab. I wanna see right here, what are our biggest gainers so far? Blackberry's on there. We know Blackberry has some kind of news, right? ATOS is a smaller stock. And if you like trading that, um, you know, you can definitely, you can actually just click on the link uh, on the ticker right there and it's going to populate the news that's associated with it so this morning they announced um approval for a medication so if i want to trade the smaller stocks i know what my news is right here nvidia we, we already know nvidia has news as well so again the blackberry news i know that there was news and maybe i was in a rush or whatever and i didn't really read it early in the morning I can just click on the ticker again and click right here. Like we've, we have several news stories right through here on the 26th. You'll see there's a lot, there's a lot going on with um, Bed Bath & Beyond today. Raymond James, we have an upgrade there. The 26th activist firm seeks to replace Bed Bath & Beyond board. So here's the news for that. And it says here, uh, this is the activist, these are the activist funds. They control a 5% stake. They're preparing to begin a proxy to fight to replace the entire board of the company. And the activists are saying that the company has not done enough to adapt to consumption shifting to online channels or made efforts to offer unique experiences to shoppers. So they're trying to, to go in and try to help, as we call it, bloodbath and beyond. And as you can see, I didn't point it out earlier, every time I click the ticker, because I want to see the news, I have a chart right next to it, pulled up. This chart is completely customizable. If you, once you have all your settings on here, like we'll, we'll add something, let's say I want, I don't know, let's say I want to add an, a moving average. We'll add a, a 34 EMA. So again, I kind of went through that fast. I clicked on settings, moving average. I'm going to change my period to the 34. Uh, I'm going to use 
I always use open high low close. I selected that. The type is going to be exponential, and I'm going to make it some kind of color, maybe yellow. Right? And if I want to save this view, all I have to do is click Views, Save View, and I'll call it Maria2 and hit Save. Now, let's say I don't want to save that 34 anymore. I already have my first one saved. Now that yellow, yellow EMA line, the 34, is gone. If I want to add it back, just click there. There it is. I will caution you, if you clear your history or your cache, you have to reset up all your settings and save it again. But no big deal. So going backwards to what we're looking for. So BlackBerry, we know, is definitely on watch. There's a lot of news, a couple of upgrades. It looks like are also some analyst notes um, in the morning, seeing that this is our, you know, one of our top gainers already in pre-market. I'm definitely going to take time, um, you know, at some point to go through and read what's going on or the rest of what's going on with them all these articles just because I, I need to understand the move. I need to understand what's happening. From there, what I do is I click on our pre-market scanner. And this quickly shows me, wow, you know, BlackBerry is, has traded 3.2 million shares this morning. That's amazing. That's a lot of volume for them. So I can look through here and see which tickers are actually moving. And if I want to see, um, you know, the chart on it, all I have to do is click the ticker, and over here on the left, here we go, it's popped up for us. Once I've gone through here, if, there, if there's a ticker here that I see that I kind of am interested in, like let's say I didn't know what was happening with BlackBerry, I can again just go to the bottom, oops, wrong, tape, wrong thing, hit news, over here underneath the volatility indicator, I can click on BlackBerry. And again, I'm back to my news. So that's the starting, that's where I start with. From there, what I do is I, I use Seeking Alpha a lot. Uh, and all of this is pushed to my phone. So I really don't even have to get out of bed to do this. I'm doing this all while I'm still trying to open my eyes in the morning. I'm just trying to get an idea of what's going on. Um, if you're in front of your computer, I'm actually registered with that with Seeking Alpha. It's free. Um, I can do one of two things from the home page. I can either click on News, and I can click, or I'll do Hide Summaries. It's just going to give me a live feed. So all of this news is live. It's not specific to any tickers or anything like that. It's completely live. I can go through there and kind of read. I saw something on Square. They're introducing an invoice app. I can click on it, and here's our here's our article. It tells me what's going on. Um, it says here's where at this point at you know 8:33 Eastern was up almost two percent in pre-market. So Square, I definitely want to keep an eye on. So I, I add that to my list of things that I want to make sure to to check on. So again, I can either go news and read the live feed. I usually hide summaries; so I don't have to scroll too much if I'm on the computer, and I read what's happening. Which tickers are, you know, which which tickers have news that I may not have seen so far. The other thing that I have set up under portfolio, you'll see over here it says portfolio one. I have a bajillion tickers set up. So seeking alpha is going to send me news for all these tickers over here. And as tickers come up that I forgot to put on here, I'll just keep adding. And I clicked on news right here. And now I'm going to get all the news specific to the tickers in my watch list on Seeking Alpha. And from there, what I like to do is, oh, did I say Blackberry, Jesse? I thought I said Bed Bath & Beyond. I might have said Blood Bath & Beyond, my bad. I meant Bed Bath & Beyond, sorry. <laughs> so from here, I'm looking through and I'm looking at What's happening with the Q's pre-market? Um, I'll compare it to yesterday. So let me expand this chart out. Ignore all the you know millions of lines that I have on here. So I can kind of kind of see there was on the weekly at least a nice double bottom here. I know there's a little bit of resistance up here from a prior area that that I have already marked. Um, I like this little climb. This right here was probably I don't know what this wick is, but um, still looks decent this morning. So we'll restore that. I'll go to SPY 
And I check out SPY as well. And I can see what SPY is doing as well. Um, I usually do check IWM because again, I wanna see consistency across the board. I'm trying to determine, you know, which areas I, I may see weakness in or which indices I see weakness in. Then I always jump to UVXY. I meant the five day. And since it's pre-market, I wanna compare it to yesterday. So UVXY, just looking pre-market, there's definitely, you know, there, it found an area of support right here, kind of bounced up, but coming back down a little bit. So we're definitely gonna keep an eye on UVXY, especially with that consumer confidence number. I believe that's delayed data as well. So I definitely wanna keep an eye on that. Um, and at around UVXY around that time. And um, this morning, I know that Carnival Cruise Lines is reporting and I think they're out now. So I'm gonna jump back over to Black Box. Oops. And here we go. We have Carnival reports Q1 adjusted EPS, 49 cents on a consensus of 44. Uh, 4.7 billion in revenue and a consensus of 4.31, so a beat and a beat. However, they're cutting their full year 19 adjusted EPS view to $4.35 to $4.45 from $4.50 to $4.80. The consensus was $4.78. So they're guiding down, it looks like, for the full year. And here in pre-market, you can see the ER candles coming in, we're probably not liking that guidance. Um, and we're gonna keep an eye on CCL on the news to see what else comes out in regards to their ER. And basically that's what I do. And then I jump in Discord. Um, well, we have a mod meeting first thing in the morning. We share what news we've all found and Teresa jumps in the room and shares all of our news with everyone. Um, and then I kind of just keep an eye on things pre-market. I have Amazon pulled up because it's something I usually trade at least once a day. NVIDIA, I like that, that um, overweight start from Piper. So that's on there, Apple. I definitely want to keep an eye on for um, movement after yesterday. There were some there were some positive analyst comment commentary that came out after yesterday as well, and um, that's what I do. Like ALDX up sixty four percent on two point three million shares. One of the things I do like to do is hit the uh, volume ratio, and that's telling me that it's traded seven times to average ten day volume. Yeah. Maybe a little cuppish here. We'll see. So that's one of the things I want to see the news on. I'm going to click that. And I'm on. I don't want to be on all news. <clears throat> Maria, I may have to let you get the ALDX. But that is one of the things I like no to worries. Do hit every. Let's see. The uh, ALDX so that's traded on the volume ratio seven times its average 10 day. This one to the downside, five times its average 10 day. Here's an upside one that's already twice its average 10 days. Things like that I like to look at. Hunt, wow, that must be, I mean, it's traded 23,000 shares and it's 1.2 times its average, which tells me it trades 20,000 a day. Something I probably won't look at. Uh, here's Hunt W, which would be Hunt Warrants. Um, obviously, BBBY that she talked about. So stuff like this, I love to hit the scanner as well. Volume ratio scanner it just tells me what's traded, you know, in excess of its 10-day average volume. Up or down. Um, also, real quick, want to go over. Um, hit all stocks again. The uh, these right here, if you're not getting these red alerts, click account, my settings, and from there you can click enable advanced. Um, so TBIX must have went down pretty early this morning and it's already bounced back up some. Let's go ahead and look at that. Both of these are VIX related, so if you don't understand VIX, don't trade it. Uh, that was at 28.84. See, that's just barely above the alert. We'll see what happens there. Um, but the VIX has obviously fell a lot since yesterday. Um, 
So, yeah, Maria, go ahead and take back the screen. Let's answer some questions, and let's look at this ALDX as well real quick and see what that news is. Sure. So Gordon had a question. What is the importance of MOC on Trader Flash? Gordon, that is really the only reason I'm looking at that is because I want to quickly see or quickly try to gauge overall sentiment. So if, if for me, at least the way I interpret it, is if I see that there is a buy side imbalance, that tells me that people don't mind holding positions overnight. If I see a really large sell imbalance, that tells me that people might be slightly nervous about holding positions overnight. But that's really what I use it for. Um, another kind of cool thing that I like to look at, Teresa, Teresa posts part of it um, on marketchameleon.com. She always posts the, the imbalance information. I love looking through here and seeing the biggest buys and sells. So I can actually sort this by um, buy on close. Let's see if it'll let me do it this way. So my biggest, at least yesterday at uh, 3.30, 3.45 my time, the biggest was in Citigroup, $52 million was bought MOC. So I like to look through these tickers so it gives me an idea. Are these Dow tickers? Are these NASDAQ tickers? Is this across the board kind of tickers? Um, I love looking at this information. I can also see the sell on close. Let's see if we can do sell notional. If it will filter. There we go. Oops. Well, on this, on sell on close, you can look through here and see what they're selling to. Are they selling a bunch of energy names? Are they selling, um, you know, basic material names? Are we selling Dow stocks? What are we selling at the close? What are we not comfortable holding? I don't want to register. There we go. So, Gordon, does that answer your question? And the next question, Ohima, can you calculate, how do you calculate VWAP? So VWAP, um, I just use the standard. So in Thinkorswim, go to studies and we'll go to edit so you can see it real quick. The VWAP settings, if you click on it, it's just um, minus two plus two on the inputs and it calculates itself. So I let it do its own thing. As far as how is it used, so I leave all three of these lines on here. I like to see the upper band, the lower band, and the mid band. The actual view up that most people are familiar with is going to be this middle band, right? And for me, it's, it, I use it as an area of support or resistance. It doesn't mean I'm necessarily trade. Sometimes I will. I may not trade off of it, though. But if I, if I see that a stock is consolidating right above VWAP really nicely, there's a possibility I may try to make a play right off that VWAP if it looks like it wants to bounce. So I'm using it as an area of support, also as an area of resistance. Jason, are there certain analysts that have a bigger impact on upgrades and downgrades? Yes, there are. If it's, you know, if you see upgrades coming out from Nomura or, you know, Citi or Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan, the names that you're familiar with, those are usually, I don't want to say, I mean, I don't want to say always, but usually those are more credible sources. If it's from ABC Bank and you've never heard of ABC Bank, I really don't care because who knows, you know what I mean? That no one knows them. You are welcome. I do actually have uh, multiple screens set up. I have it set to where you guys can see this first screen. What are you guys watching this morning? Any tickers or news that you've seen this morning that we need to be keeping an eye on? Um, Eric, you bought a 195 NVIDIA call yesterday at 325, which you saw on open. I usually don't swing overnight, but I like the trade. Okay, so you're 195. It's Tuesday. And when do those expire? Friday. So, yeah, if it was me, I would definitely That's sell a little the too open. Far, yeah. Yeah. A little You're too far out, far out Friday, in my opinion. 
I agree. Jason's saying we need to keep an eye on Twitter. I'm still holding some Twitter calls. Just a small position. Hey, you hit 33. Very nice. So Twitter, we're going to definitely keep on watch. Huh, I like that. And we've got about four minutes left before the open. Uh, did you hit that ALDX news? Oops, no, sorry. <laughs> Hold on, let's see. ALDX. That's the halt. So they auto, um, okay, so there's multiple items. Hold on, let's see. I don't think it filtered. For some reason, I don't think it filtered for me. Hold on. When the market opens, yeah, we're going to look at some flow. And one of the things we talked about with flow is consistency, consistency. So we're going to show you what we're looking for live as well. Hopefully, we can find a trade. We've had decent success finding a couple here and there during these webinars. So we'll see what happens. So, and it's taking a second for the for the news to load in this box, but this is um, the reported phase three uh, data. Okay, definitely want to keep an eye on ALDAs. It's now traded 8.2 times its average 10 day. Um, the alert stream, you know, that's one of the things I use a lot. We will show that as well. Uh, actually, NVIDIA just hit, just hit a new, uh, High for the morning. So hopefully that upgrade gets uh, Nvidia popping, gets chips popping. We'll see. So there's a couple more questions here. The first one is, how do I use utilize time in sales? I'm just looking to see whether I have where whether or not it looks like we have um, buy volume or sell volume coming in. So for example, if I'm heavy in a Q trade, um, I have another setting set up before a tick on the Qs. That I'm going to keep an eye on here and then I'll normally have NQ pulled up over here. So in the futures market, I'm looking to see like if I see the big spike or whatever, I'm looking to see do I see a lot of heavy selling starting to come in in the futures? And I'm looking over here to see, because this tick is calculating each transaction. Um, one candle equals 133 transactions and we are open. So let's go ahead and so then we will come back and answer some of these questions. We are off. Maria, if you want to pass that to me real quick. Maria? I just passed it. Sorry. Okay. Um, let me turn off the alerts. We get asked this every day. How do you turn off the alerts? Uh, we're going to have a filter here that uh, actually is going to... Uh, and to go to webinars, trying to freeze me again. So you just click this alert log off. And here we go, all options. I like to look for the first above the ask of the day. Right here, you got an Amazon on the ask, but it's a block one million, I'm gonna ignore that, but right here. 187K expiring this week above the ask. So right at the money. Uh, first one of the day is Amazon 1795. I always like to look at the first one. It doesn't mean I'll play it, but I like to track the first one. 
Apple 195s above the ask. Again, we're going to look for some consistency. And 195, 195, 195. That's three of those. Let's see if the price is moving on those. 129. Let's go ahead and click Apple just for a second. One twenty five, one twenty nine, one twenty nine, one twenty eight nine, one fifteen. So already we've got BBY roulette bullish. So Apple looking for a little bit more consistency. Here's your roulette right here. So somebody bought nineteens for forty one cents, a thousand of them, forty one K. Cron, we had a little bit of flow on that yesterday as well. I thought I just seen Cron. Yeah, 2050s here. Expiring this week, 49 cents. This Cron actually dips today. We've got Amazon high a day right now. Seventeen ninety or eighteen hundred, it just flashed. Look at these one nineties coming through BB. So somebody's dumping hard or riding hard. So somebody's bearish on Apple this week. One nineties doesn't mean they're right. Just just something to keep in mind. Maria, let's go ahead and look at your screen. I'll, I'll look for options, and they can look and see what you're going ahead and looking at on your charts live. So I know a lot of people wanted to do that. All right, guys, so I'm actually watching NVIDIA right here. Um, obviously, we're above that that opening wick. So I have an older line here. You see that opening wick barely popped through it. We've got Amazon moving up at high a day. I tried to get an order in, but couldn't get it in, which is fine. So I, I got to wait on that at this point. I either need a little bit of a pullback or consolidation. Apple, we've got moving down. So I see this weakness coming into Apple. I want to see what it does here. And I'm also watching the cues right here. We've got Tesla moving, um, but I haven't made a trade yet. I haven't put anything in just yet. So Amazon is looking good. So even intraday on my other screen, which I know you guys can't see right now, um, I like this move that App or Amazon is making. So I'm going to jump over here and see if there's any news on Amazon. I don't really see anything. So I'm actually looking at a daily, one year daily on NVIDIA, just to kind of see where we might have some space to play to on a longer, or you know what it looks like on a longer time period as well. Nvidia just hit a new uh, daily high as well. Um, that hunt we talked about that only traded twenty three thousand shares, which is one point two times its average day ten ten day volume. It's halted, limit up down. So uh, I'm actually going to look and see what hunts done. And hunts up 142 percent to 44. I think it was how much was it earlier? 20 when we looked at it. See, so yeah, a hunt is halted. ALDX um, 11.46. No consistency in options yet that I'm looking for. I really like this Amazon chart. Uh, I love this Tesla chart too. Tesla is moving for sure. And Tesla had good news. Obviously it's high a day. So in these first couple minutes, unless I jump in like really, really quick, if I just see, if I see something that I just, I know for a fact, or I'm really confident, I shouldn't say no for a fact. If I'm really confident in the way it's gonna move, um, I will probably enter in those first couple minutes. If I don't enter, I kind of have to wait 
to see where what kind of range we're going to see. I don't want to buy Tesla at high a day because, you know, there there's a lot more. The risk reward isn't there at that point. Got Apple low a day. Yeah, there was there was quite a bit of Apple bearish calls coming through. They were pounding those one nineties. Don't know again. I don't know if they're right. I just know if they were pounding them. I mean, they had size too. I mean, it was right at a half million dollars. AVGO. Uh, uh, day. Yep. That's the high day. BIOC, yeah, if you're into the low floats, BIOC is high day as well. I would like to see Apple turn around and rock and roll. We'll see. That would be nice. Facebook, you know, there, there was those 170s that were buying yesterday. Um, those have done well. Actually, I'm seeing a couple. This is what we talk about all the trade and not half the trade. Yesterday, there were people buying the 170s. Uh, you know, we actually got an alert on it. Look at it this morning. Bid side 170. I'm not sure on this one. Bid side 170. There's, there's a couple asks, but bid side, bid side, bid side, bid side. Mostly bid side on the 170s. So to me, a lot of people are probably taking profits in that. I can't guarantee that, but... If I'm in those 170s, I'm going to watch this a little bit closer. Now, Facebook looks, you know, decent on its chart. It just hit high day, or it looks like well, my line chart is close. So, you know, we had the alert on the 165s and the 170s. So those 170s, a couple of purchases today, but mainly sell side on the 170s. JD is one that, um, you know, some people are in as well. Let's see if we've seen any sell side in JD yet. Remember, we had the 2850s for this week um, that they had bought on Friday. And so far, looks like three ask side, one sell side. Um, so things I like to track, JD looks good today. I imagine Baba probably looks good as well. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up. Oops, you guys aren't looking at my screen, that's okay. I just pulled up Baba up here. Bob is at high yeah. a day. Um, Bob is at high a day. Did. JD as well. We had the other one yesterday. Alert come in on um, on MO on Philip Morris. I'm sorry on um, Altria. What was the stock we had the 170 calls for yesterday? Came in. Facebook. Um, no, the Facebook. other the Chinese Chinese oh, name. By you. I do. Let's look at that too, because that that was an interesting uh, roulette. Since everything else is kind of moving, it hit 168 this morning. Go ahead and hit back to all options. One of the things I like to watch is there are a bunch of buying in UVXYs or a bunch of selling in UVXY and stuff like that. Uh, today it's pretty dead. So I took a small position on um, Bed Bath & Beyond. Following that roulette bullish flow alert, they went with the 19s and paid 41 cents. I went with the 18s and paid 58 cents. Definitely a smarter play. Definitely a smarter play. So here, guys, I really need a new high a day. Spy looks great. It broke its opening highs, pre-market and everything. That's a spot where if you're not if you're not already long, when it breaks that pre-market high, I like to play something like that um, just for a quick pop. <laughs> I 
Oh, we talked about Bob a minute ago. There's some 180s came through, 144K for this week. ALDX hit 12. We talked about there are options in ALDX. So I've just seen them come through. That's interesting. Well, BBY hit a new uh, high day. Mario, 17 minutes. Sure, I'm 18. green. 11%. Nice. Which one of those charts on your screen is BBBY that I'm looking at? Uh, bottom left over here where my cursor is um, like dancing around. Okay. All right. I like this flow one. on the other yeah. side. Yes. I do have I look I do like it's time to make another move. Uh, it looks like it maybe wanna, wants to make another move possibly here. It did, yeah. Kind of had that little little turtle. Let's see if it gets high. I have a feeling they're going to try to get back most of Friday's losses. Maybe not all in one day, but. You know, yield curve this, yield curve that, Fed this, Fed that. At the end of the day, if the Fed backs off, the market's going to rip, usually. I mean, you know, you'll have peaks and valleys, but long term, it last week didn't really change your thesis that much. Oops, I kind of rejected a double top. We'll see. More of those space books below the bid. Now, Maria, go ahead and switch screens with me again. Sure thing. So, you know, again, here's the 170s. You know, remember, a lot of people in the room actually followed these in yesterday. Look at this bid side 170 action. Doesn't mean Facebook won't continue, right? It doesn't mean that whatsoever. But it does, look at this chart, too. Jeez. You had that high breakout, which also became support, and you fired off. Doesn't mean these 170s won't continue and won't kick ass, but you need to be aware that a lot of the people that are buying those, and you start seeing these below the bids, you know they're definitely selling or writing. So now they're buying 172.50s for next week, and this is that April 5th we continue to see. Actually, I'm not. That alerted. I'm gonna buy that one. It just—it's a repeater bullish. Okay. Yeah. I mean that—that that actually looks pretty good. If you look at here, 125, 127, 132, 131, 133, 134, 137. Those look pretty good. I mean that's what you're looking for as far as consistency goes. Um, now you're seeing 170s above the ask for this week, but you are a lot more mixed than yesterday. They're still leaning bearish on those or at least getting out, maybe they're repositioning into something higher. And now, look at this 170s. May end up alerting, actually, in a minute. Uh, so things I like to keep my eyes on. If I'm in a trade, I want to keep up with these Bs. Uh, again, it doesn't mean that it won't continue. I just need to keep my eye on it, that's all. This 17250 is definitely interesting. Yeah, so far not bad. How's your uh, BBBY doing? Uh, it was green. I probably should have taken the 11%. It is down 10%, which is, I only bought a couple contracts. So I'm down like, now I'm down $24 total. But we're still above the 34. Uh, I've got the 34 right above VWAP. So I'm just going to see what happens with it. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, too, but once Facebook makes three or four day runs lately, it always gets hit with some kind of uh, 
bad somebody news. left or some, some kind of bad news, you know, after about a three or four day run. I always get yeah, a little icky feeling after about day, you know, on day three of Facebook here in the last month. But that's one to watch. Decent flow there. Again, if you're in the 170s for this week, you may want to, and there comes another one below the bid 170, you know, for this week. Uh, 25K. So, again, it doesn't mean the trade's necessarily over. It just means that, you know, a lot of those people are taking profits. You need to be, you need to be aware of that. So, I like to be aware of that. If I follow somebody in on flow, I like to follow them out on flow. Hopefully, this thing turns around here and makes a new high and goes to 170 today. I hope it does. Uh, Maria, the 65.85 on the NASDAQ, yes. we're at 80. We're 80. I've got 82.3. There you go. We get asked a lot on, of 65. Um, sorry, real quick. Let me answer this question real quick. Ohima, the view app on Black Box is only going to be one line. You're not going to get all three. TOS has all three. Black Box has one. Most places will, are just going to give you one. Uh, Sean, uh, what do I place my trades on? On my phone, on TD, sink or swim. Go Twitter. Maria, are you still there? Yes, I am. I, I, I am right here. Okay. So Hunt is halted again now at seventy dollars. So this oh. is the one I was kind of making fun of in the low twenties because this morning, then it got halted at forty something. Now it's halted at seventy. Um, those are one of the things definitely don't chase. Um, anything that's only traded only trades twenty thousand dollars a day is susceptible to a lot of uh, a lot of things. My computer just did something weird. We're on your You're screen. Right? Yeah, we're we're are we on my screen? Hold on, let's see. Actually, we're on your screen. Okay, you need to take it back then. Okay. Yeah, because um, you've got more interesting things to look at. All right, I've got it back. That halt was hunted, halted over there in the alert stream, because I like to watch that alert stream. Sorry about that. I thought we were back on your screen a few minutes ago. No worries. So Hunt is actually, they're a shipper. Wow. I did not know. I should have looked at that this morning, actually. Me and Maria actually met somewhere around the shipping frenzy of 2016. Yep, that was fun. So this she actually, does not have options over there. Sorry. She actually killed it on um, dry ships. But yeah. All right, there goes Facebook. I, yeah, I did pick up the Facebook too. I bought a, I bought the 172.50 for next week for a buck 44. Anyway, when we're looking at options again, we're looking for consistency, consistency, consistency. Those 172.50s, had it, will they work? I don't know. I can't say that. I'm not going to sit here and tell you consistency wins every every time on options, or anything wins every time on options or on anything. But if I'm going to trade off flow, I definitely want to see consistency. So those 172.50s definitely had that consistency. There's more below the bid 170s for this week, 38K. They are definitely getting out of those 170s for this week. Uh, again, that doesn't mean it won't continue. Maybe they're repositioning, whatever. Maybe they're just taking profits because, I mean, heck, those were, I think we alerted those yesterday at 40 or 50 cents. Um, I think you're right. Actually, I can look that up. Hold on. Yesterday.
we bought those. I shouldn't say we bought them. I did not buy them. Uh, let me rephrase on that. This 170 is alerted at 50 cents, and the 167.50 is alerted at a dollar six. So yeah, from 50 cents, I mean, they're, they're pretty good profits on those Facebook. And Facebook's moving, so rock and roll. It's the best flow I've seen today, for sure. Any other questions, anybody? Let's see. Maria, I don't know where you're at on the questions. I am right here. Give me one second. Let me pop this box out so that I can see real quick. No, I mean, I don't know where where uh, what's been answered and what hasn't. So I'm oh, sorry. I know. That's what I meant. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was going to go through here. So that one you answered. So David is asking, what is your plan for entering or exiting positions um, on gap up days? Um, I'm going to use an area of support. So just like earlier, or right at the open, um, when things were starting to look really pretty, especially I really wanted to pick up some Amazon, but it was high a day. I can't, I can't buy it at high a day, especially since, you know, we were green. I mean, we're nicely green on, on NASDAQ. So I have to wait for it to show me its range. So right now, from what it's looking like, We've got this lower area at uh, 170, I'm sorry, 1792-ish. And um, we've got a high I did 1802. So I've got a 10 point range right there. So I have to see what it wants to do. Can what it's showing me right here, you know, we sold off, it broke 30, the 34, popped back up. But on this time, we, it actually held that 34 pretty much. So I kind of just have to wait and see, watch for that momentum to come in and then potentially make a play. So what I typically do is I play it a lot more carefully. Do I like to trade when market opens or just wait a little bit? Uh, it depends on the day. I don't like to trade during lunchtime because that's usually when I mess up. Oh, Twitter is high of day. I have this trade flash thing, guys. If you're on Thinkorswim, it's, I like this trade flash because it'll give you little headlines. Twitter's at high of day or at highs, calls active, so is what they're saying on Twitter. So really nice. I am in Twitter still. Uh, Twitter black box, you know, same thing at 853.42. It's like new high. So 3363. So uh, that's one of the things I like about the alert stream uh, is, you know, something that I've been alerted to over black box is going to keep me alerted all day on it too. So I love that alert stream. I can't say enough things about it. Brandon CTL. CTL is a, well, I think it trades pretty light too. That's one of those where if you're going to buy it, you've got to buy a lot of time on it. It's a really slow mover. I get, um, I get cranky with really slow movers personally. I like, I like the fast moving stocks. That's just me. If you kind of like the, the slower pace and you like the ticker and you like the spot on the chart, if you play it, I would definitely make sure that you're, that you go out. Uh, with uh, plenty of time and just, you know, know that that it trades really light. Make sure that the strike and expiration that you're trading has plenty of OI and uh, volume. And Blocker is going to make me cut her here in a second. Very green on that Facebook, though. Uh, yes, there is a negotiated rate for Thinkorswim uh, for options. I think for your account, you probably can um, get a better negotiated rate with them, though. So our rate is a um, dollar per contract in, a dollar per contract out, no ticket charge. So if you're trading more than, uh, I think it's 10 contracts. All right, got to get out of this one first. If you're trading more than 10 contracts, uh, call them because they'll, they'll probably be able to work out something better. David C on NVIDIA, let's see what she's doing. Uh, 
I like how she's holding at 34. I don't like how she couldn't make it's a new high a day, day, though. And, guys, I'm getting out of this um, BlackBerry. She is now through VWAP, and I don't like it. But we tried. Black, BlackBerry or I'm, Bloodbath? Sorry. Jeez. I keep doing that. Bloodbath and Beyond. <laughs> and I'm out for Black, 30 cents. BlackBerry is BB. Sorry. I know. Sorry. I think I'm sick. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Guys and gals, we will um, we'll wrap this thing on up if we don't have any more questions, because that's basically the... That's what we're looking for. That's a lot of how we wake up and use the system. Um, you know, and if you've got any questions, I always tag the moderators at any time. There are a couple more questions here. Uh, Sandy wants to know, can you walk us through an order entry of an option and why the preference of one in, uh, over another? You're talking about strike and expiration, Sandy? Facebook, come on, it's over 169 now. Let's go. Those contracts aren't moving as fast as I thought they would, really, uh, on Facebook. Yeah, they're not moving very fast just yet. We probably should have gone with this week just to scalp it. Uh, David is saying, what is your tick chart? So this is the tick, it shows us um, it gives us an idea of what of institutional buying and selling. So I keep an eye on this. Um, I've got the advancers and decliners as a lower study here. So I can see, you know, at the New York Stock Exchange, we've got um, 4.82 to 1, 4.7, I'm sorry, 4.79 advancers to 1 decliner, uh, NASDAQ 3.67 to 1. This tick I like to keep an eye on, especially if I'm in the indices. Um, really what I'm using it for is, let's say I want to go short. I'm not going to go short on something that's this close in Amazon's high day. I'm not going to go some close. I'm not going to short something this close to the low of the tick. I want this to tick a little bit higher because that means when they start selling, there's potentially more room to the downside, if that makes sense. But again, it's not like I'm trading off of it. It's just a guide. The um. I can't because I trade on my phone. I don't know how to even show. I can in Discord. I can show you um, how I pick my strikes and expirations because uh, I'll have to take screenshots of that and actually put it in Discord and walk you through it. I can't do that on here because this is just showing my laptop, which I do not trade off of uh, platform at all. Trade strictly off my phone. Facebook ripping. It's going to go for 170 today. And we like should have... Sorry, I'm I'm looking for the data. The um, consumer confidence should be out here at any moment. That's another reason why I haven't played Amazon just yet. Um, I want this consumer confidence data to come out. I need to see how the market's going to respond to it. Oops. Mike, you think ten March versus ten estimated? Uh, consumer confidence, 124.1 versus 133 estimated. Mike, you see me is at a decent spot if you're looking for a play. Um, it's at a decent spot. I don't, I don't think we've really had any flow on it recently, but the spot isn't bad. If you're playing it from here, Which I'd one? have a stop at uh, CME. I'd have a stop around 161 on it. Uh, Gordon, MOC, I'm not sure if you can hear us, but um, MOC is market on close. It is just an order type. So these orders are set to either buy or sell as close to the closing bell as possible. And again, it is just used as a quick way to gauge overall, for me, just a quick way to gauge overall sentiment. I want to know if people are comfortable holding their positions overnight or if they are getting a little bit nervous. And that's really all I'm looking for. Amazon is high a day. Well, what was the first flow above the ask of the day? <laughs> Remember that? Amazon. Yep, Amazon. Amazon Eric, where do you find today's right flash? 
Eric wants to know where do you find Trade Flash? Over here, if you're looking at my screen on the left hand side, you have this um, this panel right here. The bottom of the panel will hit your plus sign and click on Trade Flash, and it will pop this this widget up right here. So Ohima, for someone with a small account, the approach to that is quality over quantity. That is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I see traders make. They, or especially with a smaller account, they have a smaller account and they think they need to buy, you know, 15 AKS calls or 25 AKS calls because they can get a bunch of them. It's, qual it's quality over quantity. One Facebook call for a buck 20 or a buck whatever we paid, what do you say? A buck 44 is going to give you more than AKS. So you really, you really have to exercise patience and you have to be really selective in what you play. You have to really know the setup. You have to find the momentum and just one at a time. You don't need 15 contracts. You don't need 100 contracts. One contract is enough. And although it might be slow, those gains will continue. Like you, th that account will grow. All right. I wouldn't worry about diversification right now, Ohima. I wouldn't be worried about diversification. Your main goal at this point is growth. And with a, with a small account, one contract at a time, one ticker at a time. That's all you need. Especially like on a Friday. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Microsoft is ripping. It broke its pre-market high too. Uh, it had a buy signal at 118.30 and then it broke its pre-market high at 118, looks like it's 51 and Microsoft is ripping. It is beautiful. Two Jeez. areas, go ahead and swap screens with me again. Uh, just for a second. So people always ask about the lines. So right here, you're open, which you see is also goes across there a whole bunch of times this morning. If that was your open down. When you cross that opening, that's where I really like to look at it. And I don't always look at pre-market high, but just occasionally I like to see where it lands and it lands perfectly there too. So two lines I'm watching on Microsoft right there. So you, you can see that's where it just bounced off that one. So that's, those are how I do my line charts. Uh, so if I'm looking to play Microsoft, this is the things I'm looking for. I'll also take that, you know, first higher high of the day, which is this lower one down here. You see tank up, lower, you know, higher low, right there is your first higher high of the day. That's also a, a point I like to watch. And you always hear me say, Tesla, I'll never trade until I get my first higher high off of a low. That's the pattern I'm talking about. So those would be my three lines on Microsoft right there. Anyway, go ahead and take the screen back. Let's look for a couple more questions. Let's head back over to the Discord and see what's going on over there. Let me take this over. All right. And Jack is asking, do you ever enter trades with the initial intent of swinging it? Or are you mostly looking for intraday stuff that might turn into a swing? If the former, is there anything different with options that you look for regarding potential swings? Um, Facebook that I just bought, is in, I bought that intentionally for a swing. Those are out to next week. Short, short swing, short term swing. Um, but yes, so that one actually alerted on private Twitter. That was a, what was that, a repeater bullish? Repeater bullish. Yeah. So that let me ask you a question though. Bullish. If you hit a, if you hit eighty percent on it or a hundred percent today, would you go ahead and lock it in? Um, I would. I would sell most of them. So if I have five, I'm probably going to sell at least three, if not four. Okay. And that's only if, you know, the chart looks like there's room for continuation. If I feel like we're coming up on a resistance point or I feel like the chart's gonna not work out very well, um, I'll sell all of them and reposition. 
tell you what, that roulette bullish on Bloodbath and Beyond. Uh, wow, they got toasted on that one. They got toasted. It's starting to come back, though. Apple 195 is above the ask. Guys, gals, anything else? Yeah. Um, Kevin, did you find Trade Flash? Kim, uh, do you use the volume option tab to find good movers that don't alert? Example, ENDP. I do. Um, ENDP is a bio. I, unless, unless I know that there is specific news, I tend to, um, I don't want to say I tend to stay away from. I don't stay away from. I'm just really careful with bios just because um, there's so much stuff that can affect it that um, it can be a little bit more risky. Now, if it's just a scalp, that's a different story. But yes, I will look at that, uh, that uh, the volume options tab. Previous webinars, Mike, um, you know, I don't you know how many the were tech money one, The tech money one's back up. It's up, so we can get you the link. The tech money actually Perfect. has the link for his webinar. Um, Teresa's, there was um, fixing one thing on, and then that one will be up as well. Uh, David C, I don't have pivot points on my chart because um, they irritate me. <laughs> I like to see my candles, that's just me. Um, what I do is I bug Teresa for what her pivots are, or name-ish. <laughs> So if I, if I want to know what the pivot is, um, I know where to find it. And I can pop it on there. I don't have it on my chart, but that's simply because uh, I already have too much on there, I feel like. And I, I need to be able to see my candle clearly. Oh, you are welcome, David. Thank you. Kevin found it. Um, oh, Hima, what were we talking about? The smaller accounts? Oh, on a Friday... It doesn't matter if it's a Friday or a Monday or a Wednesday. It's going to be, it, you have to take small gains one, you know, one at a time. The, here's what I don't want anyone with a smaller account to fall into. You, you know, you, you start the day and you have a couple hundred dollars available, right? And immediately, most traders are like, I need to double this. So they're, they're looking for a home run immediately. Don't do that. Don't set that expectation for yourself. Even though it's hard, it happens to all of us. We all do it, right? We all do it. But if you can try to not do that, I think that's better. You, you really just have to take one trade at a time, one contract at a time, take the smaller gains, let those accumulate. And then slowly by slowly or slowly, your account will start to grow. And once you've grown your account to an area where you can start diversifying or you can start adding you know, multiple positions or going up a contract or two, you do that. But initially when you're starting off and you have a small account, you, you have to get out of that, I need to double this account mentality. It has to be small gains, let those compound. Let those accumulate, let those compound, grow the account. That's your primary objective. And once you've grown the account and you have a nice amount of capital that you can work with, that's when you really wanna start adding different strategies, adding positions, maybe swinging a little bit more, um, you know, things like that. Does that make sense? Uh, Sean, those are not Bollinger Bands. Those are VWAP. That's, that's, um, TOS has um, an upper band for VWAP and a lower band for VWAP. So that's actually VWAP. And Jason is saying there's a little bit of a dip. Yep, we saw a little bit of selling right through there. The keys yeah, are bouncing right here on the 34. Dropped off my top line and hit the middle line. So you know me, I've got the line, the oh crap line, and the, the run line. So it just it fell to the middle line. So, all right, guys and gals, let's jump back over on Discord if that's it. All right, guys, thanks for joining us.
Um, also, keep in mind that we do have Q&A on Tuesdays and Thursdays after the close. So if you are available for that and you still have questions, make sure you show up and you can always ask then. Otherwise, have a great day. We will see you over in Discord. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everybody.